With nearly 4,000 staff on hand, the president's workforce drains nearly a billion dollars every single year. The White House just bleeds cash. Those employees are spread across more than 22 offices, covering everything from defense to communications, protection for the first lady, and even a professional calligrapher. Scratch that, three calligraphers. What? The need for presidential assistance goes back to 1939 under President Franklin D. Roosevelt's reign, when the Brownlow Committee reported that the president needed help, so they created the executive office. Since then, more offices were created, more people hired, and substantially more money was laid out. So who are these background workers, and how much do they really get paid? Let's find out. The president is the face of the nation, however, the reality is that it's an eternally tough job and there's no way that any one person could handle it without help. In any situation, the first point of assistance is the vice president, which under the Trump administration was none other than Mike Pence. As the second in charge, Pence was both a key advisor to and a representative for the president. He also took a seat on the National Security Council and spearheaded the pandemic task force. So what does the second most powerful person in America make in a year? Compared to corporate hotshots, really not that much. A cool $230,700. One of the few people to earn more is of course the president himself. During Donald Trump's time in the Oval Office, he was raking in a $400,000 annual salary plus a $50,000 expense account, a $100,000 travel allowance, and another 19 grand for leisure and entertainment, taking the total up to almost $570,000. Since 2001, all of those who came before Trump and those who will come after, including Joe Biden, will receive the same compensation. It's all set out in black and white in the Constitution under Article 2, Section 1, Clause 7, in case you were wondering. Trump actually decided to donate a quarter of his salary in 2020, an act many former presidents carried out in similar fashion. Just a heads up, guys. All the statistics and employees in this video served within 2016 and 2020. The Biden administration and those thereafter will fill these roles with different faces, but the salaries and responsibilities won't budge too much. Next up, let's take a look at the White House Chief of Staff. While the exact nature of the role varies from term to term, generally speaking, the Chief of Staff conducts both managerial and advisory duties, including supervising key employees, negotiating with Congress, physically controlling access to the Oval Office and the President, and overseeing all policy development. It's an intense, complex role, and the salary reflects exactly that. When Mark Meadows stepped in as the Acting Chief of Staff, he was earning $183,000. His predecessor, Mick Mulvaney, earned even more, $203,500. Not all roles have predecessors. Peter Navarro, who was the assistant to the president for trade and manufacturing policy under Trump, was the first of his kind. His role was specifically created by Trump back in 2016. Navarro was largely responsible for advising the president on policies that would stimulate the economy and strengthen America's manufacturing industry. What's the pay for such a role? $183,000 per year, one of 22 employees who made exactly that figure. We know that there are hundreds of people, White House staff and Secret Service included, who look after the safety and demands of the president. But what about the First Lady? Who takes care of her needs? That job fell to Stephanie Grisham, the official chief of staff to the First Lady. She was responsible for coordinating all the employees and operations relating to Melania, including the press secretary, White House social secretary, and the chief floral designer. Any guesses as to her salary then? Exactly the same as our trade and manufacturing assistant, $183,000. Okay, moving along, a foundation of the nation's strength and economy is the National Economic Council, which works to ensure that domestic and international economic issues are adhered to and that the solutions are in line with the president's overarching goals. Basically, everything to do with money and the economy. One of the most important members of the NEC is the deputy director, aka the second in charge. During the Trump era, that role fell to Francis J. Brooke Jr., who earned a respectable $158,000 per year. However, as to be expected, the deputy director's income was heavily overshadowed by the director himself, Larry Kudlow. The former CNBC host raked in the familiar figure of $183,000 per year, which was about $7,000 more than his predecessor made under Barack Obama. Despite his role as National Economic Council Director, Kudlow's official title is the Assistant to the President for Economic Policy.
As we swivel from money to tech, let's focus our attention on Roger L. Stone, the director of White House Information Technology who boosted his bank balance with $168,000 per year. It was his duty to operate, maintain, and continually update all the IT infrastructure and services provided to the president, computers, networks, phones, and all that jazz. In an age where the need for cybersecurity is growing exponentially, having someone in this role is paramount. Interestingly enough, the White House's first ever IT director, David Recordon, had previously worked as an engineering director at Facebook. So if the president doesn't update his own iPhone, does he book his own plane tickets? Nope, not a chance. The presidential party has its very own travel guru, officially titled as the Director of White House Travel Office. Up until 2020, that role fell on the shoulders of Bethany Pritchard, a woman who made $106,000 a year. The position takes care of all the travel plan, flight itineraries, and accommodation for not just the first family, but the entire cohort of White House press who accompany the officials on trips near and far. Travel is pretty obvious, though. So are economics and trade. What we often overlook are the mundane duties that go on in the background. Case in point, taking notes at meetings. This is Dominique Dansky-Bari, the director of stenography under Trump. The $98,900 role required her to manage an entire staff of official White House stenographers and ensure that the transcripts were delivered to the right people as quickly as possible and arguably one of the more fun roles in politics and certainly one of the least controversial, the social secretary, chosen by the first lady, takes the reins of planning all the dazzling events and maintaining the social calendar. Under Trump and Melania, that role fell to Ricky Niseda, a highly experienced event planner who was more than happy to pocket the $168,000 for her efforts, a $50,000 increase compared to the salary of Obama's social secretary. Joining the roster next is the executive assistant to the president, in other words, the president President's right-hand man or right-hand woman. When Trump was manning the Oval Office, that title belonged to Molly Michael. While the majority of executive assistant roles in the White House received less than $77,000 per year, Molly was the outlier, raking in $158,000 for her tireless efforts. Every president needs an assistant, but does every president need a calligrapher? Apparently so. Leanne Clark, the White House's chief calligrapher, makes a tidy $109,200 per year for her artistic talents, writing invitations, certificates, name cards, and other visible documents. But one calligrapher is all we need, right? Wrong. In fact, the White House has three calligraphers, the least compensated of which still makes $84,400 per year. Is that an appropriate allocation of funds? That's a good question for our next staff member, Monica Ashar, the Ethics Council. Trump actually had two dedicated ethics councils on the payroll, but at $147,458, it was Ashar who earned the bigger bucks. Given the nature of the role as president, considering legal advice from an ethical standpoint is essential. Equally important is the president's reputation in the eye of the public, a reputation built off the back of the White House's dedicated content creators. Take senior videographer Samuel Brown, for example, who was tasked with filming all the most important moments of the Trump era. For carrying a hefty camera around at all times, he earned a comparatively low $80,000 per year. We've got videographers, party planners, calligraphers, economics advisors, and hundreds more White House positions that we didn't even have time for today. But all up, astoundingly, the entire staff budget comes in at, ready for this? A sizzling $714 million taxpayer dollars. Do you think these salaries are fair? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the richest, and have a great day. Catch you next time.